in a reading from Isaiah 26. It's a very interesting chapter, and I want to bring to your attention the two verses in particular that's been circulating around social media, and I will bring it out and explain and share and hopefully shed some light on this passage. Again, that's Isaiah 26, verses 20 and 21. Let's read it together. This is the word of the Lord. Come, my people, into your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. Those two verses this are the key verses. I'll share with you some background as we get into it. But let's read verse 20 again. Because most of you can identify with it since we are under the order of the government to stay in. Many people have embraced this passage because we have been ordered by the government to stay in and to experience and to understand the importance of social distancing right about now. The verse is verse 20. <clears throat> Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. Well, this passage, passage is an awesome passage. Because it is actually God's word to Judah through the prophet Isaiah. And he's telling God's people that God is going to protect them. I want you to know that this is an interesting passage because it's actually dealing with deliverance. We will see that the deliverance that God is promising is a deliverance that will come and he is telling them, just be calm, hide yourself, notice the language. Come, my people, enter your chambers, shut your doors behind you, hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. So many people are wondering whether this pandemic is going to be over soon. Our president has given an arbitrary date of Easter for us to get back to our normal. Some communities may be slower than others as far as getting back to their normal. But we understand that the experts are saying that it's going to depend on the virus, not upon us, as to whether we'll be able to get back to what is our normal. Now, speaking of normal, you may think in the United States, we are challenged because we're not able to go to the places we normally go. No concerts, no athletic events, no basketball games. All of what we are normally used to is now a new normal. And so if you think that's bad, just today I received a text message from South Africa. And that country, as of today, is now locked down. And the military is patrolling the streets of South Africa. Here is the picture that I received. South Africa that actually shows us that the military is actually in the streets of South Africa. Now, we understand that the National Guard is going to be used.
cities in the United States. But you could see from that picture that in South Africa right now, in order, order to enforce the stay that they have mandated for their country, you see that the military is now actively involved. And so this is a moment of adjusting for all of us. I'll share that picture with you one more time. Because I want you to pray for South Africa. I have spiritual sons and daughters there. I have pastors and ministers who are actually uh, asking us for our prayers because they are now having to adjust to not being able to go out for fear that the military will actually arrest them and or uh, detain them. And so we're going to get back to the book of Isaiah uh, in just a moment. We are in Isaiah chapter 26. I'm using for a theme, maintaining control of your mind. And there's a few verses I would like to read. At the beginning of the chapter that I think you will appreciate. As I mentioned, my last sermon from this chapter was in 2008, maintaining control of your mind. Let's read the first few verses there, and I'll share with you some teaching points in just a moment. And by the way, if there's a question you might have while you're following us on Facebook, you can send your question, I may take one or two, and try to address questions you may have. Again, this Isaiah 26, beginning at verse 1. Isaiah 26 and verse 1. In that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God will appoint salvation for walls and bulwarks. Open the gates that the righteous nation, which keeps the truth, may enter in. Here is verse 3. You will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For in Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength. Verse 5. For he brings down those who dwell on high. The lofty city, he lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. The foot shall thread it down. The feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. All right, we'll pause here for, for a moment. I, I want, want you to notice in verse 1 that, that we get the context of what is being said in Isaiah chapter 26. I gave you the key verses, 20 and 21. I received at least three text messages, uh, three text messages from people around the world asking me about those verses. What are my thoughts about them? Well, I want you to know that this is a song, S-O-N-G, a song of deliverance. It is God promising his people that he's going to deliver them. And so notice in verse 1, it clearly tells us in the verse, in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. So in other words, it is a prophetic song. It is a song of hope. God is telling them, you are going to get your deliverance. I shared with someone in Los Angeles today that we could use this passage as a scripture of hope for God's people. The context was that God was saying to Judah, I want you to hide for a little while. I want you to close your doors. I want you to seclude yourself until the indignation is past. Now you understand that God's enemies were going to be dealt with by God. And we know that the scripture tells us that every nation that forgets God will be turned into hell. We also know that the scripture tells us that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. 
and he turns it in whatever direction he wants. And so while we don't have an answer to the specifics about why the United States of America and all of the world is dealing with this pandemic, the experts are actually saying that it's possible that it could come back next season. Well, we want to cover ourselves. We want to decree what God says. The word of God tells us here that this is a song of deliverance. I want you to embrace it as your personal song of deliverance. But notice verse 2 and verse 3. Verse 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Verse 4, trust in the Lord forever, for in Yah the Lord is everlasting strength. I want you to embrace verses 3 and 4, because that is a mandate to God's people. It doesn't matter what we will face while we're going through this pandemic. The question is, can you trust God through this pandemic? You're going to have to trust God financially. You're going to have to trust God spiritually. You're going to have to trust God to keep you in perfect peace while you focus on Him. And I believe that it's important for us to understand that we have victory over whatever is going on. Now, there is a quote that I'm going to share with you that I think you will find interesting. And I believe that it's important for us to stand strong and continue to be strong in faith. I believe that right now God is going to strengthen us and test us. You know, the Bible tells us that he will never allow us to be tested or tempted above that which we're able to bear. If God took care of the children of Israel wandering in the wilderness, he can take care of you. If God is able to feed them with manna from heaven, he's going to feed you. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. God is going to make a way. And you know, I really believe that it's important for us to know that God has given all of us resources. There's something that you could do in helping someone else in need. This is a time for ministry. It is a time for you to reach out to people who have special needs. Whatever you could do to help right about now, that's what you ought to do. And so here is a quote. This is the one that talks about trusting God in the light when you can't see in the dark. I want you to embrace this and understand that God is with you no matter how dark it may be. What does it mean to trust God? We have to trust God in the dark. That means not only when things are good, but when we cannot see our way. Trust God in the light is nothing, but trust him in the dark, that is faith. A great preacher by the name of Charles Spurgeon quoted those words. And, and so, to trust God in the light is nothing, but to trust him in the dark, that is faith. You know, this is a dark season for the United States and the world. And I believe that this is the time that God's people have to stand up. We have to trust him in the dark. Many jobs have been threatened. So many people are not sure about what will happen as approach that arbitrary date of Easter Sunday. And so I just want to remind you that you can trust him even in the dark. You can trust him when things doesn't look good. You could trust him when you might have to fast a day or two. You could trust him until that next paycheck, paycheck comes. You can trust him to take care of you and your family. I confess it now. I decree it now. I decree 
and I declare that God's people will have all of their needs met. I decree and declare that God's people will have their minds stayed on Him because they trust in Him. I decree and declare that God is going to take care of His people in spite of what is happening with this global pandemic. I'm going to ask that you read those verses again. It's found in Isaiah, Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. It says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever. For Yah, the Lord, is everlasting strength. So I'm going to, to ask that you embrace that scripture, share it with others, and know that God is going to take care of you. Now, as I move towards the conclusion, I want to share with you how important it is to understand that to fulfill a prophetic assignment, the prophet had to be willing to do whatever God told him to do. My students in seminary will know that there were prophetic actions that God called this prophet to fulfill. They would actually have to act out in what God was saying to the nation. I want you to turn now to Isaiah 20. This will give you an understanding that one of the enemies was Egypt. And as we look at Isaiah 26, he is actually telling God's people, go into your house, go into your chamber, close your door, seclude yourself for a moment until the indignation of the Lord has passed over. It's similar to what happened in Egypt when the death angel passed over God's people. We can connect Isaiah 26 to the Exodus story where Egypt was protected by God during the plague of the death angel. When the death angel passed over Egypt. Well, I want you to know that this pandemic, it is unbelievable the numbers of people who have already died in the United States and around the world. Louisiana, it is unbelievable the number of lives that have already been lost. It's been documented that even medical health professionals are getting sick and one of the doctors have already died. It's been reported that many of the people who are trying to keep other people alive are being threatened now. And so this is the time that we need to unite in prayer. We need to stay focused. We need to trust God and understand that God is not a man that he should lie. I want to create an air of hope. I want you to know that you can still hope in God. This is Isaiah chapter 20. In order to be a prophet, you have to be obedient. And this is an example of what a prophetic action was. Notice what Isaiah had to go through. It's in Isaiah 20, beginning at verse 1. In the year that Tartan came to Ashdod, when Sargon, the king of Assyria, sent him. And he fought against Ashdod and took it. At the same time, the Lord spoke by Isaiah, the son of Amos, saying, Go and remove the sackcloth from your body and take your sandals off your feet. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. Then the Lord said, Just as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot. How many years? Is that in your Bible? Three years. For a sign and a wonder against Egypt and Ethiopia. So shall the king of Assyria 
lead away the Egyptians as prisoners and the Ethiopians as captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, with their buttocks uncovered. Is that in your Bible? To the shame of Egypt. Then they shall be afraid and ashamed of Ethiopia, their expectation and Egypt, their glory. And the inhabitant of this territory will say in that day, surely such is our expectation. Wherever we flee for help to be delivered from the king of Assyria, and how shall we escape? Now, chapter 20. 20. Thank, Thank you. you. In chapter 20, we, we have an entire chapter where the prophet Isaiah has given himself in obedience to what is called prophetic action. God commanded him to go naked. Is this in your Bible? For three years. He is prophetically saying that I am going to strip those other nations. And I want you to see my prophet. Again, this is verse 3. You don't have to go to it. Now, Jervis, but notice this. Then the Lord said, just as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and a wonder against Egypt and Ethiopia, so shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians as prisoners and the Ethiopians as captives, young and old, naked and barefoot, with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Now, what I want you to see is that the prophet was commanded by God to fulfill what is called a prophetic action, to strip himself, himself naked. And when you study this closer, you find out that usually they were covered only with a loincloth. But the point is, for three years, he was to be an example to what God was going to do to Assyria. So I want you to understand that God always allowed the prophet to act out whatever God was doing in the nation and against those who were against God. Now, I want to share a couple more teaching points with you. And I think you'll find it interesting that as we study this passage, and in particular, the prophet Isaiah, I'm going to ask that you look at it later. But when we look at Isaiah chapters 24 through 27, it is called the little apocalypse. You know, the word apocalypse means revelation. The book of Revelation is called an apocalypse. What I want you to understand that chapters 24 through 27 in the book of Isaiah is called the little apocalypse. Now, our key chapter is chapter 26. It falls into the category that is called the little apocalypse which means that God is trying to reveal something. So, Dr. Lloyd, what is God trying to reveal in Isaiah 26? He's trying to reveal that God is saying to Judah, I want you to go into your houses, I want you to stay in, I want you to settle in and allow the indignation of the Lord to pass over. So we've been mandated by the government to stay in. We've been mandated by our local and federal government to stay in, to do what we call social distancing. So whatever this pandemic is doing could pass over. Many people have embraced Isaiah 26 as a scripture that is relevant to what we're going through today. What you now have is a better understanding that chapter 26 falls into the category of three chapters, 24, 25, 26, and 27, actually four chapters. Those chapters are known as the little apocalypse. 
The word apocalypse means to reveal. Another interesting point for those of you that would like to know, that there's always revelation that God is giving to his people. If you want to go back and study chapters 13 through 23, you can find many of the nations that God is sending judgment upon. In chapter 26, we understand that to be Egypt. When we look at chapters 13 through 23, there are oracles, or judgment of God upon heathen nations. I'm not going to turn to it now, but I'm going to ask that in your devotional time, when you read Isaiah 13 through 23, those chapters deals with the judgment of God against all heathen nations. And so we have to understand that God in chapter 26 of Isaiah is giving Judah hope. I want to say to all of us who are intercessors, all of us who are believers, that God is saying through Isaiah 26, 20 and 21, close yourself in, shut the door, seclude yourself, hide away for a moment until the indignation is passed over. That was a prophetic word to Judah because God was going to take care of the enemy. I believe that if we unite together, that if we pray together, if my people which are called by my name, if we would pray together, I believe that God can shorten this pandemic. If we would unite in prayer, I believe that God can bring us through this pandemic. This is not the time to fear. It is time to have contagious faith. I've been preaching this since the beginning of March. We need contagious faith, not contagious fear. Understand that God has not given us the spirit of fear, 2 Timothy 1 and 7, but he's given us love, power, and a sound mind. It's important to understand that we don't have to live in fear in spite of what happens in Washington, D.C., in spite of what's happening in New York, in spite of what's happening in New Orleans, in spite of what's happening around the world. All we can do is trust God and continue to pray. What is our theme tonight? It's important for you to understand that God wants you to keep your mind on him. Keep your mind in perfect peace. It is important that you have control of your mind. If I would leave this thing with you, it would be this, maintaining control of your mind. I also want to share with you that as we pray together, we want to believe God that he is going to reveal what's really going on. I'm going to give you an opportunity to share a question or two, and I'm going to address the questions in a moment. Let's go to our second quote, Jarvis, and then I'm going to go to the first question. I have a second quote I would like you to embrace. Our theme is about maintaining control of your mind, which simply means that you have to trust God when you don't understand what's going on. And so I'm going to ask that you follow me now and embrace this theme and this quote as a part of our theme. Again, this is for us to trust God. I want you to embrace it. I want you to receive it. God has a reason for allowing things to happen. Would you agree? God has a reason for allowing things to happen. We may never understand his wisdom, but we simply have to trust his will. I'm going to ask that you embrace it. Notice what it says. God has a reason for allowing things to happen. 
We may never understand his wisdom, but we simply have to trust his will. I want to share that with you, and you could share it with others. others. This is the time that God's people must trust him. This is the time when you, together, with God's people worldwide, have to maintain control of your mind. In verse 4, in verse 3 of Isaiah 26, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. And so the Lord says, trust in the Lord forever. Trust in Yah, the Lord is everlasting strength. For he brings down those who dwell on high. The lofty city, he lays it low. He lays it low to the ground. He brings it down to the dust. The foot shall tread it down. The feet of the poor and the steps of the needy. It really seems to me that God is leveling the playing field. Right now, people who have power have no control over this pandemic. Those who are wealthy have no control over this pandemic. Those who are poor and needy have no control over this pandemic. What does that mean? That means we all have to trust God. And so I want to commend that to you, and I want to believe God that we will trust him in the midst of this pandemic. Now, I'm going to see if we have a question or two that we could address. This is normally our Bible study night, and here is a question, and I want you to notice it. Okay, let's see. I see here. I, this is a question. Bishop, the word says they had to walk naked and barefoot for three years. Do you think we will be in this for three years? I don't. The experts are saying that what we are facing <clears throat> right now could very well reappear next year. They are not sure whether this epidemic or this virus could regenerate again about this time next year. Right now they are working hard on a vaccination and until there is a vaccination there is the possibility that this may happen again. And so what we are saying, Selena, is that Isaiah the prophet was commanded by God to go bare, uh, go naked and barefoot for three years because that's what God was going to do to the nation that he was sending judgment upon. I don't believe that that implied, or it, it doesn't imply that we may have to go through this for three years. And so my answer to your question is no. I don't believe that this pandemic is going to last three years. But I do believe that we need to be praying that God grant wisdom and direction to those in the medical profession to be able to find a vaccination because it's very possible that this virus could return again next year. I want to give you an opportunity for another question. Anyone that would have a question regarding the pandemic, I'll take it now and try to address it now. The scripture that we're referring to is that in Isaiah chapter 20, where God commanded him to go naked for three years. Let's go back to Isaiah 26, and we'll start to wrap it up. In Isaiah 26, the key verses again, as I mentioned, 
from about three different places in the world. I had people texting me and asking me about these verses. I would like to say you can embrace it. You can embrace it as God's song of deliverance. Remember, this is a song of deliverance. And verses 1 through 19 is actually a prayer. But then, after verse 19 of Isaiah 26, what I want you to see, I'll have to give you the exact verses, and I want you to notice that when we get to verse 20, it changes. Where now the word says, Come, my people, into your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and will no more cover her slain. All right, so those are the verses, verses that, that we want you to embrace. Now, now as, as I conclude, I want to remind you that God always protected his people in the time of trouble. He didn't always take them out of trouble. God protected them in trouble. So I think it's important for us to understand that we, who are the people of God, must stand sure that if God did it for the three Hebrew boys and protected them in the fiery furnace, if he was with the children of Israel in the wilderness, he was with them through the 40-year journey, he'll be with us. If he was with Daniel in the lion's den, He'll be with us. And so this is the time for God's people to embrace the promise of his word. He never promised us to be taken out of trouble. But God promised that he would be with us always, even to the end of the world. So it doesn't matter how difficult it may get, God promised that he would be with us. All right, just a couple more teaching points, and I will be done for tonight. I'm going to ask that as we close, if you have a special prayer request, I'll take your prayer request. You could send me a message. You could message me on Facebook, and I will take your request and pray for you. I will also ask that if there is a question you'd like to get a personal answer for when we conclude the Bible study, I will respond to you as well. All right, so Isaiah 26, the Lord promised that he would be with Judah. The Lord promised that he would be with them in their trouble. He promised that he would keep them in perfect peace if they would keep their minds on him. As I conclude, I want to encourage you to help someone else. In Genesis chapter 4, the question was asked by Cain when God asked him, where is your brother? And Cain answered in an arrogant way, am I my brother's keeper? As I conclude tonight, I would like to challenge you to become your brother's keeper. If you know people that need food, feed them. If you know people that need clothes, clothe them. I believe that this is a time that our community can unite and come together. I want to challenge you to become your brother's keeper. As you know, Cain questioned God. When he said to Cain, your brother's blood is crying out to me. And Cain answered in an arrogant way, am I my brother's keeper? Well, I want to challenge you. 
and answer that question for you. We are our brother's keeper. I believe that right about now, our church at Spirit of Liberty Global Ministries, we are reaching out to people who are seeking help and help that we can provide. We're trying to help them. Around the globe, in South Africa, in the United States, we just need to know what it is that we can do to help. And I would share with you that whatever resources God has given to you, it is not just for you. If God blesses you, it's not just your blessing. It's for you to bless others. And so I want to challenge you tonight to be your brother's keeper. The blood of the people who have died from this pandemic is crying out to us like the blood of Abel cried out to God. What is it that we can do as a community? What is it that we can do as a church? What is it that your nonprofit can do? What is it that your organization can do? Right about now, we need to become our brother's keeper. You can do it on a micro level, meaning you can do it on a small scale. Or you can do it on a macro level, where you unite and partner with some other organization. But whatever level you help, it is needed. And so as I close tonight, I want to challenge you to become your brother's keeper. Father, I honor you now, and I praise you that I am uniting with literally thousands of people and maybe millions around the world who are believers, who are saying, God, what is really going on? And you commanded Isaiah to write, close yourself in for a little while. Shut your door until the indignation has passed. We understand that now to be God promising deliverance to Judah. And so, Lord, I thank you now that as you promised deliverance for Judah, you're going to deliver Louisiana. We decree and declare protection for your people. We pray, God, that as the medical health professionals seek to help those who are infected with the virus, God, touch their bodies because we believe that with your stripes, we are healed. We are the people of God and we're uniting right now to trust you, Father, for whatever is going on in the world. You are aware of what's going on. The Bible tells us that the name of Jesus is above every name. It is above the name Corona virus. It is above the name pandemic. The name of Jesus is above every name. And Lord, we stand in faith. We agree together as the people of God that healing will come upon the land as you promised in 2 Chronicles 7.14. If my people would pray. And so Lord, as we pray together, heal the land. Heal the United States of America. Bring an end to this pandemic. Lord, we pray for New York. We pray for California. We pray for all of the United States. We pray for Germany. We pray for China. We pray, God, for other countries of the world. Because this pandemic has touched the globe. It is our prayer that the words of Isaiah will be comforting for us. Because as you promised deliverance for Judah, I believe that deliverance is going to come for us. We claim it, we receive it, we speak it in faith that Isaiah 26, 20 and 21 will become our prayer of deliverance. This is our prayer now in the strong name of Jesus. I want to send a shout out to the SOL Nation, to all of you that are praying with us. We look forward to hearing from you. If you would like to share with us, we've already posted on Facebook. 
you can share with us on PayPal. You can do it at Spirit of Liberty, Christian Fellowship, and Global Ministries. Or you can share with us as we share with others. You can send tithes and offerings through Cash App at my number at 337-852-3573. Send a donation. We're going to help somebody. We're going to feed somebody. We're going to clothe somebody. The number again for Cash App is 337-852-3573. Or you can use PayPal, Spirit of Liberty Christian Fellowship. You will find the link and you will be able to share a love offering. Help us to touch someone else. If you're a member of SOL, you can pay your tithes by using that link or you can send it through the cash app and my number, Dr. Lloyd. And that is 337-852-3573. Until we meet again on Sunday, I'm your bishop. I'm Dr. Lloyd, sending you some love. Understand one thing. You've got to maintain control of your mind, your faith, your love, your commitment to God. He's not a man that he should lie. I want us to stand united. Let us pray together that healing would come to the state of Louisiana. Why don't you help somebody? Do it today and become your brother's keeper. I'm your bishop. I'm Dr. Lloyd. Have a great evening and remember to read Isaiah chapter 26. God bless you.